There is something about cars. They are artificial, mechanic. They can't rot. They can barely decay during our lifetime. If you leave a car alone in the middle of the forest, it sticks out like a ghost standing in a neon-soaked rain. Cars have a peculiar place in our society. They occupy the doubtless description of capitalist consumerism. They are a sign of wealth, of status, of manliness, of being adult. A man who values himself must get a car when they turn 18. They are also transportation, or vessels for daily commutes. They get us to work, and they can also be work. They're symbiotic to us. They couldn't live without us. Of course not. They're a bunch of scrap. But a driver and their car are just as much companions as a knight and their horse. There is a period of time, a void, in which the vacuum of an afterlife and the mundanity of our existence merge together and we become nothing more than bodies, flesh templates for our thoughts to take us over or to cease to even try to make sense, for our inland empire to rest for some time until our tongue is ready to jumble words and spit them out for the rest of the day. It is in this void that we are thrown in bird of passage, a white vessel for what once was, an all-seeing eye looking for something tying him to the living and the mundane. ¿Qué es un fantasma? Un evento terrible condenado a repetirse una y otra vez. Un instante de dolor, quizá. In Bird of Passage, we play as something, someone, that once was and ceased to be a long time ago. Someone who, much like us, doesn't know why they're here. Someone whose memories locked away can only be opened by the retelling of their tales. Ghost stories are often hindered by their storytelling. Ghosts are often nothing more than a MacGuffin to tap the character's shoulder and give them a chronic constipation. And of course, that's absolutely okay. Not every story has to be deeply thought out, and sometimes a silly ghost story is all you need. But ghosts are an opportunity for writers not only to frighten their audience, but also have them sympathize with their monsters. Ghosts are pending. Everyone has a ghost inside them. A relationship left tangled in the back of their mind. A relative who has long been gone but never really left their side. An identity which they can't confront because they can't afford to be scared. And they shouldn't be. Nobody should. When we see ghosts depicted in popular media, they are most often found in old, nature-infested, humidity-ridden environments, haunted houses, drippy basements. If we are to analyze beliefs around the world, we find that spirituality is often associated with nature. The Shinto belief is inseparable from the Japanese forests and greenery. In Candomblé, Yemanja is inseparable from the sea. In Tupi-Guarani beliefs, Yamandu, or in other accounts, Tupi, is the creator of everything, Tupi being directly associated with thunder. Okay, so um, what do ghosts have to do with any of this? 
popular culture ghost stories may not have anything to do with religion, at least most of them. But it is ignorant to say that the spiritual has not had any hand in shaping ghosts as they are today, or at least not acknowledging it, and ghosts as a product of that are not artificial, they're natural. In Bird of Passage, we don't know who we are. And I don't say that as a Disco Elysium-like story idea. No, we as the audience have absolutely no idea of who we're playing as. That's the purpose of the story. Madalena Gratarola, the game's narrative designer, makes the, on the surface, daunting task of finding her way through a narrative words-only puzzle interesting and captivating. Her dialogue isn't exactly simple, but it is not confusing and is never not a joy to read. We are a vagrant, lost soul, yearning to understand what stuck us to the human realm and where and what exactly is our resting place. It is a meditative game, relaxing and sometimes melancholy. It is a prime example of an indie game done right. I'm sorry, I, I take that back. There is no right way to make a game. There is no right way to make art. Let no one tell you that. But Bird of Passage is a game that could never exist in a AAA market. It is short, it is introspective, and it is indie at heart. A weird, self-contained, artsy, and great game. As you engage in a game of who am I with various cab drivers, you start making sense of who you actually are. A man who passed long, long ago with the great Kanto earthquake, tied spiritually with something that night. You don't know what, and you can't know yet. You can barely form sentences, you can't think, you can't remember those memories long buried underneath layers of trauma. Or Vagrant was traumatized by what led him to his demise, or if you want to look at it another way, what led him to exist in the first place. The mornings, the gardens, the life. He can only think through things that hinder that trauma. Nostalgia brings him to his own spirituality. The calm, serene, almost void of any noise, destruction and disasters, blackness of the night. Taxis that he saw being implemented in the start of a century. The conversation that he can now only have with cab drivers because it's their job. For years he's been doing this, trapped in his routine, trapped to his death. A bird of passage that desperately tried to move between two worlds and got stuck in one. He can't move on because he's too afraid, too afraid to confront his own death, too afraid to confront the fact that this is all gone. Too afraid to confront the fact that he has put all his life into a ginkgo tree and that maybe that tree is gone. Maybe it never even grew out of its silver seeds. Too afraid to do it alone. We feel trapped with him. The looping music of the amazing Emilio Pozzolini brings us to the same beat. Again and again and again and again, and again, maybe we'll never find answers. Maybe life was meaningless, and we're just too cowardly to admit it. Maybe this loop truly is endless, and our ghost, our story, has faded away a long time ago, and nothing was ever worth it. Maybe
Maybe we just needed a friend. Maybe our story just needed an actual listener who cared, who will go on and bring this tale of a lost yokai longing for his child, his self, in the streets of Tokyo at night. Comfort that it was worth it. We lived a life. We lived a story. And now, we can finally rest. Hello everyone, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit messy since it's my first ever attempt, but I hope it was enjoyable. Go check out Bird of Passage and its developers from Space Backyard, they're wonderful creators and should have way more attention than they already have. Also check out An Outcry, which I use as an excerpt in the video, in the part where you shouldn't, shouldn't be afraid of who you are. It's a really good game. It's really well, well written, and it's one of my favorite games uh, lately. It's, it's just a demo, but I think you should check it out. Hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe if you did, and you want to see more if you want to. And hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.